look at these brand new laptops. First one is a shiny pair book. You can open it with just one finger, so smoothly designed even dust can't permeate it. Its operating system is bulletproof, reliable, and so fast to boot up. And then we have, well, a door book? Yeah, it's a famous workhorse for nearly any task. And while it also switches on in a flash, it doesn't have pair books glory. The question is, which one would you choose? Both of them have everything you need to work. A screen, a keyboard, speakers, and a microphone, similar connectivity ports, and a pile of other hardware and software. It's what you expect from a laptop. But that's not what makes the difference between the products, because people want a thing not only to work, but to work great. That's why a pair book might look so alluring. When we see a one-finger screen flip, fast boot up, and rare breaks, do these qualities look like they perform any function to you? Nope. That's why we call them non-functional requirements. So, let's talk about what they are and why we need them. Functional and non-functional requirements may not be easy to say 10 times fast, but in reality, both things help us describe different qualities of a product we build. And they are equally important because they are part of our acceptance criteria. If the product meets them, it's considered ready. Functional requirements are basically a roster of things that explain what people should be able to do within the application. That's our main focus when we build something. Functional requirements for the spoon would be a handle and a shallow round bowl so people can hold it and grab food. Or take, for example, a social media app. Users can create a personal profile, upload photos, write posts, or messages. A person must be able to write messages to their friends will be our functional requirement, since it points out the specific needs of people and features that can satisfy them. For example, a chat. What about non-functional requirements? Well, things are a bit more complicated there. While functional requirements specify what a product should do, Non-functional requirements specify how a product should do it. Also known as quality attributes, these requirements describe the expectations about system properties. Some of the most common examples are performance, or how fast the software responds, scalability, or basically how well it holds up under a certain load, portability, as a measure of how easy it is to port software into another device or operating system, usability, or how easy it is to complete a certain action. Security, maintainability, and the list can go on and on. Take for instance our social media application. A user may require a real-time messenger and even some smaller features like scheduled send as part of our functional requirements, right? Non-functional ones would tell us how many users an application can handle at a time without helplessly freezing. Should we store all data or remove some for security purposes? What latency for messages is considered good? But who can tell us about those attributes and how do we define non-functional requirements? The truth is, end users don't really know how fast, convenient, or scalable the software should be. The bigger, the better, you might say. But in reality, it's not clear what bigger means in terms of, say, usability. Moreover, there are dozens of aspects users don't know or care about. So unlike functional requirements mostly expressed by the users, non-functional requirements come as a result of research by the technicians, software architects, or analysts. How do we run research to find them? First and foremost, non-functional requirements can be derived from the product goals, values, and concerns. For instance, we want to build the safest messenger in the world. So, the product specifications will obviously include security and data integrity capabilities, but they will also entail some constraints, as long as government regulations and data protection laws like GDPR have an impact. The second source for non-functional requirements is obviously the competitor market. Analyzing the competitors, we can discover some standard system capabilities that should be considered. This way, we can define what's considered good security on the market and take those system qualities as our requirement. Looking at your own existing technology is another way to understand non-functional requirements. 
Introducing new capabilities to the existing platform will obviously present some constraints and limitations. For example, we want to reach security by using modern protocols for data transmission, but our existing environment simply can't handle it. Especially if we talk about some bulky legacy systems that whisper, I'm too old for this. Surely, once we define and gather all of the requirements, we need to capture them so that the team can grasp the idea. Let's take a look at how to document non-functional requirements. We usually express functional requirements as user stories. For a social media app, these could be the need to create a personal profile, to upload photos, to write posts, to shoot and upload videos, and many more. Now, in terms of our non-functional requirements, we want the application to globally load pages within one second. In this case, a non-functional requirement would affect all functional requirements. So it makes sense for us to document this as acceptance criteria for those four features, because the desired response time will determine if a given feature is completed and behaves the way we want. In software documentation, non-functional requirements can often be seen in a definition of done section, linked to the user stories it will affect. But it's not only user stories we implement to reach these goals. What we also need are metrics and testing for non-functional requirements. As any software attribute, non-functional requirements should be measurable. That's why we need to assign metrics as soon as we know what the requirements are. For instance, Metrics like attack success rate are used to test security. Usability can be measured in the average number of clicks it takes a person to complete some task. Portability is evident when we know the percentage of non-portable code. And all of those things are checked and counted during the non-functional testing. Non-functional testing basically comprises different tests for performance, scalability, security, usability, and other attributes. These tests are usually automated, since non-functional requirements are global and critical to our application. So running the tests automatically simply saves time while keeping track of those properties. And it's not rare for a single requirement to address multiple attributes at once. Have a look. We can express a non-functional requirement like this. Chat rooms with 50 users online should have a 0.1 second latency for sending a message. This means that we expect an application to respond nearly instantly when there are 50 users online and typing at once. And this can be seen as a performance as well as a system scalability metric. So let's wrap it up. Non-functional requirements are as important as functional ones. They explain different aspects of the application, although sometimes it's pretty hard to approach them and it looks like they're biting. Don't be afraid. Just remember these three things as you stride confidently to your solution. First, while non-functional requirements are about architecture, it's always more workable to focus on a part of your software instead of the whole product. That's why we suggest defining non-functional properties for a specific component or group of them. Second, link those requirements to your business objectives. Do you really need your application to be so portable to launch on literally any device? You see, sometimes great portability or performance may not impact your user satisfaction that much, but it will certainly take a large bite out of your budget and time. And third, look at the existing standards and guides. It may become an unending task to understand what's required of your application. Remember, you're not the first one to develop, say, an Android app, so there are guidelines and standards you'll want to consider. Benefit from other people's experience. That's it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos about software documentation. And if you like this one, it takes only one click to tell us about it. Stay tuned.